Uh, I'm Doug Bacon from the Rushville store. I'm in service there. Um, Seth Lawyer from Parts. And Steve Gender's walking around here. Um, he's going to talk to us some on the numbers here at the end. Uh, he's in sales at Greensburg. So, got a video for you. We're going to talk a lot about upgrading and why we should upgrade, where we've been, where we're going. Anybody want to go back to this? Someday. upgraded from here at John Deere we've continued to push the boundaries so that we can offer growers as many profit generating options as possible but to get to that truly next level of performance we took a giant leap to ensure that you get higher levels of yield and productivity let's take a closer look at what separates the game-changing exact emerge from other planter row units as you can see there's no seed tube Know what else you don't see? Seed rolling in the trench. We replaced the seed tube with a new delivery cartridge, the heart of this revolutionary planter technology. Inside, you'll find the brush belt, which delivers seed directly into the trench on a dead drop with no roll at up to 10 miles per hour. Each seed is carried by the brush belt, but not before passing by our all new seed sensor. Think of it as another set of eyes where you need the most population, singulation, spacing information. It's all gathered at the sensor. Every precious seed is carefully spaced and carefully placed. The new bowl-shaped disc singulates your seed, while the concave shape allows the brush to grab each one effortlessly. Watch how these paddles push seed into the center of the brush belt so you can feel confident knowing there's a secure handoff every time. And thanks to the improved brush style double eliminator, only one seed rests in each hole before the disc hands it over to the brush belt. This allows you to enjoy the highest possible singulation. Of course, this high efficiency meter system wouldn't be complete without a superior vacuum. That ensures the disc holds the seed tightly before it's passed on. Check out the new hopper design that helps you get the most of your seed pool by maintaining target seed population on slopes of up to 15 degrees in any direction. But there's more. Two independent electric motors keep exact emerge running smoothly. One that rotates the meter, the other turns the brush belt. This gives you the speed matching delivery and population only exact emerge can offer. Not enough? How about the fact we've made active pneumatic downforce standard on this planter? And when paired with the new brush belt delivery, you get optimal depth for maximum yield at 10 miles per hour. Just set the downforce margin you want and run confidently. It's that simple. Finally, a planter with no trade-off between speed and accuracy. A planter that buries the myth of only planting at 5 miles per hour. A planter that marries precise seed placement and productivity. It's the all-new Exact Emerge row unit from John Deere. Accurate at 10 miles per hour. Exactly. So we're constantly upgrading, aren't we? And updating. Purpose of this class gets you to start thinking about where we've been, where we're going, right? We're all out here for the same thing, and that's yield. So we're going to talk a few things about what can affect our yield and our yield potential. Four areas I'm going to hit on. Correct population. That can have a 1 to 3 percent effect. Uniform spacing, 1 to 2. Uniform emergence, that's a biggie, 5 to 9 percent. And our planting window, 2 to 5 percent. We're going to talk a little bit about how our exact emerge planner can um, help in those areas. Population, the correct population. If we use a 200 bushel to the acre potential, 
it's a two to four bushel of the acre uh, issue. Obviously, uh, one of the biggest thing on determining population is the potential that the ground has. Um, anything over a certain point in certain soil is just a waste of seed, which is a waste of money, correct? So uh, variable rate seedings become a big issue, a big deal. Um, with exact emerge, uh, it's basically standard um, variable rate because each row is being turned by an independent motor. So we're infinitely variable there. Um, next option we have, uh, exact emerge has curve compensation um, standard. Curve compensation to, uh, to explain that a little more, in uh, my territory we have a few 90 foot planters and I know we, we have a uh, 120 foot planter available. Well, as this planter goes around a curve, you can, you can easily back up one end of the planter and the other end is swinging fast. So uh, what curve compensation does is, since we can control each meter individually, we can slow down or stop the meter on the inside of the turn and we can speed up the meter on the outside of the turn to maintain that good spacing throughout the turn. So uh, it's a good option there for seed savings and potential yield. It's pretty comical to see some of those big planters. You can go out in like on the end rows where they're starting a field and you can see a whole pile of corn right here in one pile and then the spacing's real wide on the outside. It's Uniform spacing, we have talked about spacing for years. All of our competitors have talked about spacing. That's what we argue back and forth. Who's got the best spacing? What unit, what brand, what color? Well, it's in this study showing two to four bushel of the acre yield impact on spacing. Let's talk about what we can do to get good spacing. Some terms that uh, are thrown out there quite often. Um, population. That's pretty self-explanatory in spacing. You start hearing the term standard deviation. This is the amount of variation there is away from the average seed spacing. This is um, shown in inches. So basically if we're showing wanting a six inch spacing, every inch or quarter inch or half inch that a seed is not spaced perfect, that's the deviation. This bottom one here, which I'm not sure what happened there, it's off the screen a little bit, but COV, um, we see that on our monitors, we can monitor that. Um, the coefficient of variation, this is the amount of variation as a percentage of the average spacing. So we take the deviation, divide it by what the spacing is supposed to be, we come up with our variation percentage. So just a definition to those terms that we use quite often nowadays. Got a little chart here. Um, explain this a little bit, our perfect spacing. Everything's in zeros. One percent skips. So basically we have one skip out of every hundred seeds. You can see what it does to our COV. This is what we're going to read on the monitor. Our deviation averages out to this. But what, what are we really concerned about? The effect on our yield? That can be a 1.3 bushel to the acre loss on one percent skips. 1% doubles, we've preached for years, you know, we want to control our skips and our doubles. What's our doubles do? 1% double, these numbers match, right? This is what's going to show on the monitor. Same difference as our skip, but what's it do to our bottom line? It actually increased the yield just a hair. Probably enough to pay for that extra, that extra seed we wasted. So it's kind of a wash. And these three lines down here show misplaced seed, basically deviation. The population's correct, but we didn't place that seed right. So what's it showing as far as how important that spacing is? Until we get down here and are basically misplacing that seed up to probably an inch off, it really has no effect on, on popular, or, uh, yield. This next chart's kind of the same thing, just re, re uh, describes it. Up here at the top, we've got perfect spacing. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody's given 100%. If we put one skip in there, we've got 110 out of this plant and 110% out of this plant, which, like we joked earlier in 2012, that might have been our best option right there. 
but we've got zero percent because this uh, plant here in the middle is missing. So right here's our, our loss, our 73% of our potential yield. To show a double here, this guy's 100, this is 100. Our two doubles are given 70 each, so that come out to 140%. Actually shows the reason for our, our yield gain. Then down here it shows our misplaced seeds and the effect they have. Moral that whole spacing story, not that it's not important, it is important. Misplaced seeds are sometimes bad, a missing plant altogether, a skip, that's always bad. Extra plants, kind of a wash. This last year, and I'm not blaming any particular seed company, we've seen it across the board, but seed was trash. There was fines in it, there's little bitty kernels mixed with large flats, it was hard to plant. So when we're out there fighting our singulation, which, which side do we err on? Skips or doubles? Doubles. doubles. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the point we're trying to get across here. Yes, we'd like perfect spacing, but if we can absolutely not get it, and it's not just a John Deere thing, I fought some, chased some precision, some brand X, they weren't getting it either in certain varieties. Let's err towards the double side. So what affects our singulation? Or ultimately our spacing. That's what we see once the corn comes up, correct? So we gotta start with our meter, be able to singulate it accurately at whatever speed we've got. Can we plant 38, 40,000 population at seven mile an hour with a finger pickup? You can't do it, right? Speed killed there. So with an exact emerge, we can spin that meter um, at a slower speed because we have more holes, um, get a better singulation at a higher speed. The next thing we're concerned with is placement, how we get that seed after it's singulated placed in the ground. Um, exact emerge, we have the meter, as the video showed, passing the seed off to the belt brush, which then carries it down to the ground. What affects our singulation is vacuum, obviously. Um, anybody in here run a vacuum planter? If you start that vacuum in the morning, do you ever have to adjust it during, during the day? Quite a bit. The next solution we have for that is vacuum automation, which is standard with an exact emerge, assuming you have the tractor that can, can communicate and run it. Um, needs to be an, a, an R series tractor. Basically, the, the planter is going to take over that remote on the tractor and speed it up and slow it down to maintain the vacuum level that you want. There again, our delivery system, accurate up to 10 mile an hour, um, direct seed handoff from the meter, controls it all the way to the ground pretty much within a few inches. Um, seed released in a rearward trajectory matching the ground speed. So now, since we have two separate motors, our uh, meter motor can speed up and slow down to maintain a population coming out of that meter. And then our uh, belt brush motor, it speeds up and slows down to match ground speed. As uh, the video said, it's matching a rearward trajectory as it releases the seed at the speed of your ground speed. And the way I relate that to guys, I don't know if it helps, but if you're going down the road at 60 mile an hour and you throw your Pepsi can out the window, what's it do when it hits the ground? It tumbles and rolls forward, correct? It looks like it's going backward, but you're driving away from it. It's rolling forward. If you could reach out and throw that Pepsi can rearward at 60 mile an hour while you're driving 60, it's pretty much going to drop, correct? Standing still. Well, that's what we're after here. At five mile an hour, when the seed comes down the old seed tube, it's going to hit the ground and maybe bounce a little, maybe. At 10 mile an hour, what do you think it would do? Whatever it did before, it'd probably about double it. So what we're doing here is controlling the seed down and then spitting it out at the same speed as the ground speed, going for that dead drop. It's just a little chart here to show the COV of a uh, conventional planter. I don't care what color it is, the, the chart there is red, but it could be our um, former model of planter or white or blue one or whatever. But as the speed goes up, 
your variation is going to go up. It's just the way it is. With an exact emerge up to 10 mile an hour, we can maintain that variation because we can carry the seed to the ground and control it. Emergence. What was it? Five to nine percent of our potential yield impact? It's a big deal, guys. 10 to 18 bushel to the acre on, on a 20, 200 acre, 200 bushel to the acre potential. What can we do with our exact emerge to help emergence? This picture here shows a half inch difference of planting depth. It's pretty hard to see, but this corn's all emerged, this is not. Would it be pretty easy to say that the picture of the old two cylinder, that that seed could vary pretty easily half inch, that old planter? What we gotta do is get that seed planted at a, at a consistent depth. How to achieve uniform plant emergence? We have to begin planting when the soil is fit to plant, when the temperature is at least 50, and there's a favorable five day forecast. That's pretty easy, isn't it? You just watch the weather and wait till there's a good five days coming. Plant at the proper depth, like I hit on before. How do we plant at the proper depth? We maintain downforce. You pick the proper depth, the planter maintains that depth. Um, as the video showed, we have active pneumatic downforce as standard on an exact emerge planter. Also have the option of hydraulic downforce. Um, the jury's still out on, on, on that as far as is it really worth it, but it is an option. Um, we've paired up with Dawn Manufacturing to offer that. It uh, is a hydraulic system and it has its pros or cons. Um, gives you the ability to control individual rows a little more than a total bank of air, um, but the option's there. How do we achieve uniform plant emergence? Well, it's real simple, guys. All you got to do is not plant when it's too wet, when it's too dry, when it's too cold, or with too much residue on the ground. That's all there is to it, right? This uh, chart, kind of blurry here, I apologize, but this is showing the difference in emergence um, with conventional till compared to no-till. And uh, so that's another factor that can affect our emergence, obviously, is our tillage practice. Um, I don't know why some of my slides have gotten down a little bit, but planting depth, once again, it's the big thing we want to try to control. This is showing the release point of a standard planter. Right here, we drop it from the meter down the seed tube. It's free-falling. Here is our uh, handoff from an exact emerge meter into the belt brush and we carry it clear down here close to the ground. So, The other thing that can, tr can uh, affect our planting depth is what? Bounce. What creates bounce? Clods, rocks, rough, rough terrain. Um, another option we've got to control, uh, control that a little bit is row cleaners. Um, got a few new options on Hydraulic adjust row cleaners, um, we can control from the cab. Anybody that's run row cleaners, you know that uh, changing soil conditions, you look back and you think, uh, them things are plowing pretty hard or they're not doing anything, maybe I ought to lower them a notch, but it kind of stinks to get out there and however, whatever kind you've got, adjust them one at a time, whether it be pulling a pin or rotating a cam or whatever. Pretty nice option to be able to just hit a button in the cab and on the go be able to adjust those and um, really maximize the effect of those. Uh, just a slide showing our, our easy adjust row cleaners compatible with all exact emerge. The fourth, uh, fourth little subject I want to talk about is our planting window and how large actually is that. Um, Steve talked earlier, you know, to, to combine to harvest, we may have 60, 90 days. Um, planting window, we say 30 days, but do you actually get 30 days? Seems like anymore we better be able to plant our corn in a week, hadn't we? Seven to 10 days maybe. That has a uh, four to 10 bushel effect. Just a little chart showing the yield loss from uh, missing that window. Exact emerge planter, say you picked up a few acres this year, got the same size planter, 
the difference between running five mile an hour and 10 mile an hour on 2,500 acres with a 24 row planter, it's almost cut our planting days in half, right? Now then, when is the perfect day to plant? That's always the key question, correct? But a lot of us have more to do than we can get done in that window, so we end up trying to start a few days early, maybe a week early, because we're worried that we're not gonna get it done. Well, if we know we can get quite a few more acres a day, maybe we can better pick that, manage that, uh, that planting window. So that's some reasons that we need to try to do it exact and uh, some reasons how we can do it. Seth's gonna talk to us about a few upgradable options and uh, what they offer through parts, so. Thanks, Doug. Get switched over here. Uh, like Doug said, basically, um, I'm just gonna kind of briefly hit on a few retrofit part attachments uh, that would have come standard on the, the MaxiMerge 5 and the ExactiMerge units that are now retrofitable to planter units, model year, uh, 2015 and, and prior. A uh, couple big things, or a couple really neat attachments that's, that are now available, uh, like I said, that would come factory on ME5 and Exact Emerge uh, that I think are pretty neat. The first of, of those two being a uh, new design gauge wheel arm and bushing. The arm itself looks very similar to the same one that the deer has used for years, but this bushing's actually uh, what, they'd, what they had changed. There's, it's only threaded uh, right in the center, and I'll pass this around. And what that does, with it being threaded only in the center of that bushing and flush on the ends, uh, basically when you get to, the, to where you're gonna set your gauge wheel and get it adjusted correctly, once you run the bolt through it and tighten that bushing down, it'll actually help uh, seal off dirt and debris from getting in between your arm and the bushing, and that's obviously what causes wear. Uh, so, so Deere says that you could get up to three times the life out of this gauge wheel arm and bushing design. And if you're like me, you hear, well, three times the life, that's automatically gonna be three times the money. Well, they're, and so I kind of did some research on that and it's really, uh, it's a, actually a really cost effective option. Um, they're in the, in the uh, spring catalog now. You guys should have all received one of these in the mail. And I believe the, the arm and the bushing but right around 45 bucks for the assembly, which is really just a couple bucks difference from the original style. So really cost effective, uh, much more life, much more wear, and, and just a better design altogether. Another really, uh, another cool option that, like I said, would be factory on 2015 and later, uh, but still retrofitable to previous models, uh, the new vac chamber cover. Uh, I guess really kind of like the gauge wheel arm doesn't look any different than before. The biggest advantage of this design, uh, snap in, snap out, knocker, wheel, and uh, scraper. So instead of in the past having to take a few screws out to replace those, it's just as simple as pulling a tab, snapping it in, and pulling it right back out. So if you get to a year where we're changing uh, crops, a few different times throughout the season can certainly save a lot of a lot of downtime. You know, nothing. They really didn't try to reinvent the wheel there, but pretty cool, cool design. Uh, some aftermarket attachments. Um, I'm just going to barely scratch the surface on these. Uh, I would encourage you guys if you have some downtime, go to Deer.com, add more attachments, and the possibilities for for some of the attachments out there are endless. Uh, so I'm just going to hit on a few few common ones here. Uh, on the left, simple screw unit mounted screw adjust row cleaner. Really simple design, tried and true, been around for, for a while. Um, really basic design, like Doug kind of hit on, the, the only downside to this is that there's a difference between looking at it and knowing that it needs adjusted and running out of the cab and adjusting it. So um, certainly a design that's been around for a while for, for some time because, I mean, it's always worked if you just keep it adjusted correctly. Uh, if you want to go one step further from that, Deer is actually partnered with Dawn, so a lot more of those attachments are, are more readily available than they were in the past. <clears throat> uh, and, that, and Dawn actually offers a frame-mounted, hydraulically adjustable row cleaner 
runs through the power beyond, so all those attachment, all the modifications and the adjustments that we know we need to make can be done from the cab. Real simple, uh, still has the same benefits of, of a standard row cleaner, just a little more versatile. No-till coulters, um, kind of like the name implies, you know, a lot of guys always think, well, I work on, on my ground, I don't need no-till coulters. Anymore, there's a lot of guys that are, that are going to a, a coulter, unit mounted coulter, whether they're conventional till or not, uh, just for the, the advantage of having something else to initially penetrate the soil. And uh, you know, whether it is no-till or, or worked ground, there's still some advantages uh, with that initially making the, the first slice in the ground. Obviously, you're gonna get more life out of your opener blades, more life out of the bearings. And then with it fracturing the ground, you'll actually also see uh, less sidewall compaction and you get more uniform closing uh, since, that, since the soil is already fractured. So, I mean, really, I mean, everybody's seen them. Uh, and there are a few different options, whether you want to go 13 or 24 wave blades, bubble blades, you know, a lot of options there, really simple design. And then kind of taking that one step further, uh, I believe Yetter, this is through Yetter. Uh, <clears throat> it's a unit mounted row cleaner and coulter combination. So do two things, one with one attachment. Uh, really neat design there. Uh, another thing that the deer has recently come out with, and again, you can see this in the spring catalog, uh, they, they now offer a cast uh, spoked gauge wheel. And obviously, like the name implies, you see it is spoked. The advantages of this, uh, you know, whether we like to admit it or not, we've all been out running through a field when ground conditions probably weren't quite right. Maybe our neighbors were out there planting, so we felt like we needed to. And you get in some spots that are a little wet, uh, you just kind of look forward, don't look at the planter and just drive through it. Well, the, the big advantage of this style uh, with having the spokes gives more room for uh, trash, for residue, for mud to go through without getting wedged in between the opener blades and the gauge wheel itself. Uh, when that happens, something's gonna drag. When, when, then when, you're, when you get drag either in the opener blade or the gauge wheel, something's gonna wear. Another thing that I think is really unique about this design uh, it would be in, in the bearing retainer. Uh, old style gauge wheels, how do you change the bearing? Pull the wheel off, split the wheel, and then usually by the time you do that, you realize the plastic half's shot. So you run into Smith's, grab a new wheel half, go back, put it all together, cuss trying to put the tire back on the wheel, and it's, it can be a headache at times. A uh, really neat thing about this design, you undo a snap ring, bearing comes out, you don't have to split the wheel. Uh, real simple, really serviceable, uh, very little downtime. And like I said, it is a cast rim, so you ought to see more life uh, in that design as well. Dawn Curve Tine M-Series Closing Wheels. Uh, another option that's been pretty popular for us here last, last year or two especially. Um, they are fairly new. Um, as you can see, they are a tined cast wheel. Uh, advantage of this, obviously, is over uh, cast and, and even rubber closing wheels, those help fracture the sidewall you get less sidewall compaction, more uniform seed to soil contact, and then all that will, should eventually lead to a more uniform emergence. And Doug kind of hit on the, the importance of emergence. Um, and another thing that I really like about this design, same hardware, same mounting style as uh, the earlier style rubber and cast closing wheels. Um, but another option that's been really popular, I know uh, Jeff here's put some on, was that last spring? Two years ago. Um, they starting to see more and more guys do that. And I'd say of the ones we've sold, probably half the guys went the curved tines all the way across the planter. About the other half still kept one of the original rubber tires, rubber closing wheels, and then put one curved tine per, per row. So really neat option, uh, like I said just kind of scratching the surface on different attachments there. Uh, also, until uh, April 30th of this spring, Deer's also running a few specials. Uh, 3,000 off if you'd want to upgrade to Seedstar XP, $1,000 off Seedstar 2, as well as uh, $2,000 off Row Command. Uh, Doug kind of talked about 
or I, I guess if you've had Sam and Lawrence's class yet, uh, they'll talk about some of the importance of row command, being able to individually shut off rows um, on your end rows, obviously going to save input on seed, increase yields on your end rows as well. So really a uh, beneficial option there that you could have an opportunity to save a lot of money on. $500 off active pneumatic downforce. Doug talked about the advantages of that. Uh, $500 off variable rate drive. Again, if you're going to try to lower input, might as well take advantage of being able to save a little money on that. And then half off on Seedstar Mobile. Uh, so if you have any questions regarding any of that stuff, be sure to, to grab one of your salesmen or, or, uh, and, and just ask if, if there's anything we can do to, to kind of help or get you a little more details on any of those. And uh, if you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to turn it over to Steve, be a, one of our ag salesmen at Greensburg, and he's going to go over the exact Merge retrofit units. Guys, I'm going to confide something in you, with you. When they handed out the assignments for what we need to put on projects, I was pretty disappointed. Doug got to talk about the importance of emergence, planting seed bed, timing. Seth got to talk about hardware. You know what I got stuck with? Math. You know what's worse? I'm keeping you from going to lunch. I think by the time I get done, you'll like math just a little bit better. Doug talked a lot about this really neat row unit called Exact Emerge and the advantages to it. Maybe got some guys thinking about it, you got you a little excited about it. It's my job to figure out how it works for you and how it can pay. <clears throat> Why retrofit? I think Doug hit it pretty good. We got to cover more acres per day in that peak 10 day window. I need to cover more acres, maybe with existing equipment. You know, I'd like to have a new planter, but it's really not in the cards. Maybe I need more capacity, but man, if I go to a bigger planter, now I gotta upgrade my harvesting equipment too, and that's really not in the cards. <clears throat> I wanna take advantage of that new genetics I paid for. That planter's a good way to do it. Well, how will it pay? Well, there again, I'm not buying a new frame. I'm using my existing frame I've already paid for. I want to maximize the potential of those genetics. The next one is how can I afford it? If anyone has bought a new planter in the past four to five years, I'd sure like to know who got 0% for 48 months on it. And I'll also tell you one thing else, you don't get to sit still in my class. You're going to shake your head yes or shake your heads no, by betting you didn't. High productivity and precision, what am I talking about? Okay, these two pictures, this one, which, oh man, I wish it would have been more distinct, and this one, I took myself last year after our exact emerge demonstration planter, and it planted at eight to eight and a half mile an hour in a field that was hit one time with a VT tool. Now, why didn't I go 10 mile an hour? Well, partly because we didn't put row cleaners on that planter, it just had coulters, so row unit balance was a limiting factor, even though the meters are doing a great job, I wasn't able to maintain the depth control that I wanted to get to even emergence because of speed limitations. But this one, row command. Does everyone in this room have row command on their planter? Yep, nope, yep, nope, nope. Okay, why don't you have row command on your planter? And honestly, even though we're not doing this, I can give you reasons why you will and you're gonna see it with my great math. Cost of retrofit upgrades. I'm gonna tell you, Friday morning, this gave me a shutter. A 12 row planter, in this example, I'm using one that's already got seed star on it, the base a monitoring system. I don't have active downforce on it, but it's a doggone good planter. It's a $65,000 upgrade. And I see you shaking your head, because I had the same reaction. I came over here to a 40 footer and it's 70 grand. Well, how come a 70? That one's only 70 and that one's 65? Because we're going to start out with a planet that already has the best monitoring system available and it already has active downforce, so I don't need to upgrade those things. I simply need to upgrade my row unit. Pretty big numbers, aren't they? Pretty staggering, right? I apologize if I'm where you can't see it. How am I going to make that work? Remember, I got 0% for 48 months. 
That's $15,235 a year and $17,579 a year. Now, here we get to do some math. Real world experience with that 40 foot planter last year, me running it and other people running it, that thing covered 39 acres an hour. And that was a real world, not John Deere's testing. That's what we experienced with that planter. Doing some math, I can backtrack a 12 row at 29 acres an hour. If you already have a 40 foot standard planter today, I'll guarantee you you're pushing hard to do 29 acres an hour at four and a half to five mile an hour. In my example, I'm going to say we're planting eight actual hours a day. Maybe I'm in the field 10 hours, but I'm actually planting eight of those hours. And on a 10 day window, I can cover 2,320 acres a day. And that's real world guys, not some ethical uh, equation. If I go to this 40 footer, 3,120 acres a day. That's 24 row plus capacity. If I break that down, that great big $65,000 question, $70,000 question, well how 766 an acre and 586 an acre sound now? You can shake your heads, yeah, I'd say, yeah, but that's not too re unreasonable. I think I can pencil that a little easier, okay? Just like on TV, but wait, there's more. Doug talked about picking up how many bush on an acre if we planted in that ideal 10 day window? I think that figure is what, eight to 10 bush on an acre? What if I say I'm gonna pick up two bush on an acre? Would that be unreasonable to, to say we could do? And I'm gonna use, man, I hate that figure right there, I hate it, but maybe it would be reality. On 2,000 acres, that's $12,000 of additional yield. 18,000 bushel or dollars worth more on a 40 footer over 3,000 acres. Now I'm down to $1.61 an acre on that 30 foot planter, and guess what? I got paid $421 a year to make that conversion. Now that I got your attention, not ready to bite yet, but wait, there's more. I talk a lot about row command. See if this doesn't get your attention for those guys that aren't running it. Let's say that we're running $300 a unit in top end triple, hybrid, triple stack hybrids. Is that an unreasonable figure to say? Maybe I'm shooting it short a little bit. At 80,000 seeds a unit, 34,000 seeds an acre, my goal, I'm gonna plant 2.3 acres for every unit of seed or $127 an acre. Row command conservatively will save 10% or $12.70 an acre. I go over 2,000 acres, row command just paid me $25,520. And I don't care if we're maybe not an exact emerge planter. Another brand of planter, doesn't matter, math works out the same. If I go over 3,000 acres, I'm gonna get paid back $38,280 in seed savings, besides any other benefit. And now my payback's less than two years. Now does that $70,000 seem so unreasonable? just in row command savings alone. Guys, I try to make mine as short as brief as possible because I know I'm keeping you from lunch and I get to talk about math. But I'll ask you, and you can raise your hand, you can shoot me out of here, whatever. Did I prove maximum productivity out of that row unit? Did I prove, Doug proved maximum precision? And did all three of us prove maximum payback? I want to know one other task you do on the farm that has the ability to put that much money back in your pocket. Guys, thank you very much for attending. If you have questions, please. And, and I'll give you this one shot. One shot. If you've got a criticism, you better say it now because I ain't going to hear it later. Thank you very much.